my man Mazingo. And we are coming to you live from the FMI conference and the Simbi booth, booth 108. Yes. We're going to be here all day. This is our first interview of day two, and we are pleased to introduce to you, make sure you get his name right, Corey Roken. Who is a principal Perfect. at Oliver Wyman? Did I say that right? You said it perfectly. Well, welcome to Omni Talk. Thank my you. I'm excited to be here today. We're excited to have you. Um, I'd love for you to just give our audience a little bit of your background, of your role, and what Oliver Wyman does for those who yeah. might not be familiar. All right, that's a tall order, but I'll, I'll do what I can here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Corey Rokin, Oliver Wyman. Oliver Wyman is at the end of the day uh, management consultancy. We are a consulting okay. firm, but our team focuses on the retail space and we really cover end to end from retail strategy, retail growth, down to how you actually drive change in store. And that's where I spend a lot of my time. How do you actually make impact in store? And these days, there's a lot of the traditional levers, but AI, technology, robotics has really moved into the store in a way that we haven't seen in recent years. And that's where I spend a lot of my time helping our retail clients figure out how to make that work for them. Okay. Yeah, Corey, we've heard a thing or two about you uh -oh. and your robotics background, so we're excited to talk to yeah, you Yeah, we today. have. I mean, we heard in the halls yesterday that you're one of the <laughs> foremost experts yes. on in-store technology, but particularly in-store robotics. So, so my question for you is this this morning as we kick things off. So um, what separates, in your mind, in-store robotics from other tech options that claim to do the same thing? So when, you, when we look at the store and we think about what opportunities you have. You obviously have a lot of things you can do that put more power in the hands of our associates. It lets them do their jobs better. Mm -hmm. And then you have technology that can actually help augment the workforce as a whole. Do things, and we're, we're in a world today where labor and store is a challenge. We can't fill roles. We can't get enough associates, especially associates with experience. Mm -hmm. And so if we can help augment them, let the people in the store do the jobs that we need people doing, and think about opportunities that we can leverage robotics to fill right. some of those gaps. That I think is really the power of robotics. And a lot of the work with uh, robotics, uh, vision AI, and other technology and how they can unlock capacity in the store is really, I think, going to be the differentiator and where the power is going to be there. But let me press you on that because, like, you know, for people that are pretty, you know, um, you know, have a pretty strong acumen about this topic. Um, you know, you could argue, like you could say, well, why don't I just use fixed position cameras versus robotics? Like, what's your thought there? Capital. Capital, okay. Capital. Mm -hmm. Fixed position cameras are very expensive. You need to cover a full store, like a full grocery store, you need a massive number of cameras everywhere. Robotics, you could have one robot going up and down every single aisle throughout the day, and that covers that cost in a much more meaningful way. Right. Now, does that give the frequency of data that you need to drive the impact to get the information that you want? That, I think, is some of the trade-off that we're sure. seeing. And we're seeing some retailers and some other technologies come out with other uh, other options. Um, even a lot of players looking at how they can leverage like their CCTV camera network right. to get the information. Yeah. But again, a lower capital play of can I get one robot with w that can move up and down my right. aisles or that can do things instead of having to cover my entire store with cameras. Yeah. That traditionally has been the argument mm -hmm. for that type of technology. And it's kind of a false dichotomy too in a lot of ways because it's not really an either or question. It's a situational based question at the end of the day. Is that right? And they solve different problems sometimes. Yeah. Right. Right? Like a, a robot can do one thing where fix, fixed position cameras can do others. I also know some retailers have both. Mm -hmm. and have fixed position in some of their stores or in some of their departments and robotics that, that fills some of the gaps. You, this is really, especially today where there's so, much, so many new technologies that we're still trying to learn, it's really about experimenting, trying different things, finding what works, and so it's really that mixed approach that we're finding works at this stage. And I think I, I think I know the answer to this question too based on what you said in the outset, but why, why robotics or even fixed position cameras over putting the device in the employee's hands to take photos and get the information that way? <laughs> we have, we're in a position right now where labor is so tight in our stores that our, we're forcing our staff to be so busy right. filling shelves, doing work that they're not doing what we want them to do, which is interacting yeah. with customers. Mm -hmm. That is right now one of the biggest challenges in traditional retail, especially grocery retail, is our customers, when they walk into the store, they no longer have that high service, high experience, mm -hmm. I, w I have a question, who do I ask type environment. We yeah. want to bring that back to retail. Right. Yeah. We want to bring that high quality experience back to retail. And the only way to do that is to unlock the capacity of our store teams that are so busy doing other things, right. doing tasks that can be um, supported by technology, by robotics, by other things. Yeah. And so that is really what I, what I would like to see and what we think is mm -hmm. necessary to bring back 
the unique aspect used to have in full service grocery mm. retail. Yeah, and it requires training, new training. Yeah. How do you specifically train a robot take? Once. Yeah, you train a robot once. You have to train a new staff member all the time, and it gets back to what you were saying with like just interacting with customers is a much more natural thing for a new associate to be able to learn how to do. I imagine the that's true. Uh, Multi-decade super experienced retail associate is a thing of the past. Yeah. We no longer have yeah. that. We no longer have that anymore. And so we need to create environments where we can still set our associates up for our team members up for success, even if they don't have the generations of experience that we once had behind the store. So technology can help augment them, can help right. make them more powerful, more successful from day one. So it's both, yes, you don't need to train a robot, but it's also how can robots, how can other technology make an associate more productive, more effective in day one of their job right. instead of having to go through days, weeks, months of training. Yeah. yeah. Well, Corey, I'm curious, you're making some really compelling cases. Mm -hmm. I don't think our audience mm -hmm. will disagree with you, but where are we on the robot adoption curve right now? Ooh. And where where do you think we're headed? When will we when will when will all of the retailers listening pull the trigger on investing in robotics versus just exploring we'll say i would say we are very much still in the exploration stage if you okay. look across all retailers yep. there and are some leading players there are some who are pushing the envelope yeah. but i think very much we're still in the exploration stage i think some version of the technology is inevitable yeah um yeah, yeah we, we talk about this in a, in a lot of different tech a uh, lot of the the net new technology in the market like we are somewhat inevitable in this coming into the store is it going to take the same form or same flavor that we see maybe not but it'll come we are very much still in the exploration stage, mainly because, uh, firstly, uh, retailers don't always have the economic capacity to right. do the type of innovation that other industries can. Right. We also know that at the end of the day, the customer is in person in the store, and we're very cautious, very careful about anything could in that can impede that customer experience. And sure. so just taking it slow, finding the right yeah. things that work, that is still the stage we're at. Again, there are some retailers that are pushing the envelope um, and that are seeing really incredible impacts because of that. Uh, but I think it's going to be time before you really find that these are the standard across the industry. But I do think that will come. So, yeah. so capital being one thing, willingness to put technology in stores and what consumers or customers' uh, level of acceptance will be. Concern and about disrupting the in-store yeah. processes. Yeah, like okay. The in-store processes are such are built on discipline, on structure, on yeah. you train someone to do something and do it well over and over again. Right. And you introduce something new, you shake that process. I, kind of, I keep on coming Wh back to yeah. the complexity that's coming into stores. Which, yeah. And this is just the which, risk of just causing trouble there. Which is kind of an interesting... Um, point of view to begin with because that's what a robot does is it comes in and does things the same way every time over and over and over again too which is which is fast it's a fascinating dichotomy intellectually when you think about it all right so what are the what are the cut and dried use well two questions what are the cut and dried use cases you're seeing or the value that robotics is creating in store number one right now and then where do you what are those use cases that are maybe not as well known yet but that you think are to come in the future yeah. Yeah, I think as we've seen robotics and we've seen technology come to store, uh, areas like inventory management, ar mm -hmm. areas like planogram verification, price verification, those have been somewhat tried and tested uh, use cases. Again, there's still, every retailer has a different profile on whether those actually make sense for them or not, right. but those are pretty well tested use cases. Right. As we get more, we're seeing um, retailers start to use it for things like quality checking. Is our, What's the quality mm. of my produce on the shelf? Mm. Am I finding bad apples, bad peaches, and do I need to send people to do that rotation? And even how you use that information more upstream. How do I provide that data back up to my uh, central teams, my supply chain, my suppliers? Mm -hmm. yeah. How do I monetize that information? Mm. That is a very much a lot of where these discussions are going. But right now it's you know inventory management, kind of finding out of stocks, finding uh, kind of poor execution in store. That tends to be the the, the, yeah. round, the first set of use cases that a lot of retailers are, are pursuing to then create the basis that this supports the technology and yet the technology is in store. How can I now make the most use of it? Corey, what about asset protection? Are you seeing anybody explore mm -hmm. that that you can speak of or start to look at like, what else can these cameras yeah. capture while, yeah. They're, yeah. while uh, the robots are roaming? Cameras do a great job, are a good use case for that. Uh, the introduction of like uh, smart labels, like RFID labels yeah. and mm -hmm. multi-dimensional uh, UPCs, really, or barcodes really unlock the opportunity to think about yeah. new ways of 
seeing where my product is in my store sure. and is it going places I don't want it to go. Right. So I do think that that's going to be. I'm, I don't know if robotics themselves are going to be the answer to that. I think it could mm-hmm. be. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of different technologies that are trying to play Cer- that space because it is a challenge yeah. right now in store. Less so than it was. It's less kind of agenda item number one that it was. Yeah. Um, but uh, it still is for sure a uh, area to continue to think about. Well, let's get you out of here on this question, Corey. Um, We've been asking a lot of people that we've been talking to here at FMI about how the consumer experience is going to change in grocery in the next five years or so. How do you feel um, operations are going to change in a grocery store in the next five years? Let's talk about it from the the retailer's perspective. Well, and I kind of touched on this earlier. I would like to say, I think we're expecting to see a lot of this technology will free up capacity for our store team members to spend more time with our customers. Right. We've trained our associates and our team members, we've trained our customers essentially limit interaction in some ways. To not go up to someone and ask, hey, where do I find X product? Or I'm looking for X, Y, Z mm-hmm. type mm-hmm. thing for some recipe I'm making. I think you're gonna start to see that change. I think you're gonna start to bring those, see those interactions come mm-hmm. back to retail both as you free up capacity from those team members, but also as you provide them better access to information, right? If a Mm. team member can use the latest in AI to answer a question like, um, you know, I walk up and I say, what is a good tomato to use for stewing? The average associate in store (laughs) would have no idea what that answer is for many of our, for many retailers out there. Um, Technology can actually (laughs) enable that and can help them answer those questions and provide better service to our customers. So I think the return of service to some yeah. degree to the store and how we unlock labor from our stores to enable to deliver that, I think is going to be a key part of, of where we see the customer experience evolve. Nice. So, Corey, what is the best tomato Do for stewing? Do not ask me. <laughs> I will, I'll go ask uh, the, some generative AI tool the yes. same way that I would like to see associates do that. <laughs> oh, man. Um, you did make me think about one thing, though, because I imagine you look at a, a gr- average grocery p more than I do. And, you know, one of the questions that you raised in the beginning was, you know, there's always the fear, you know, I think when robotics are at play, like it's, you know, it's going to take customers or employees jobs. But at the end of the day, like in a grocery operation, the point I think that you're also making that I was talking about with somebody yesterday is the, the payroll has been stripped out of most of these operations already. There's not much more you can cut mm-hmm. really. Right. So it is about freeing them up to do the things that they're best suited to do. Is that right? We are still in a world right now in grocery, at least grocery retail, where labor is a challenge. We would mm-hmm. like to be able to staff more people in our store. We yeah. just can't fill spots or fill them just with experience the enough people. Yeah. And so we need to find ways to say, this is where we need our staff to spend their most amount of time yeah. and what we need them to focus on. Right. And, and use technology to fill the gaps where we can. Um, so it's, it has, it, for me, my opinion, has nothing to do with taking yeah. labor out of store. It's more about we are labor constrained right. and how do we allocate it to the highest value. We need to get uh, more things done. Exactly. We've got to figure out yes. how to get more things done. And so done. customer interaction, doing complex prep, yeah. that kind of stuff, that is exactly what I want my store team yeah. members focused right. on. Walking up and down aisles, checking uh, my inventory levels, maybe that's something that yeah. robotics can take off their plate. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Corey, thank you, man. That was a great conversation. Of thank you. Yeah, you were, you were ready to go here bright and early this morning. Here <laughs> Had a lot FMI. of coffee walking in yeah. here, so uh, yes. shaking a bit you here. You did really though, well. Very really articulate, well. Very articulate. I think you do need to follow up on what the best tomato is for stewing. I'll come back to you but, with that. Uh, we, Our we, listeners we, are going to be messaging yeah, I, us, so we'll just forward all those DMs right to you, <laughs> Perfect. I'm dying to know. All right, and thanks to Simbi for sponsoring all our coverage here today, and Anne will be back all day, and until That's then. Right. Be careful out there. <laughs>